Hello, fellow history peeps. Welcome to Hip Hughes History, where in today's episode, we're gonna travel back through the annuals of time and look at five Fump Senko assassination attempts on presidents that didn't go according to plan. So why don't we sit back, relax, grow our brains, and go giddy up for the learning right now. So let's start in Milwaukee in 1912. Actually, the date's October 4th. We have Teddy Roosevelt running for a third term. Of course, he's not president. He's a former president, and he's just come out of the Gilpatrick Hotel where he stands up in his car to wave to everybody, and along comes John Schrank, an ex-saloon keeper from New York City who's been trailing the former president for weeks across the country, and with his colt, he shoots once, and the bullet travels directly into Teddy Roosevelt's chest. Now, it is buffered by his eyeglass case and his 50-page speech that he's about to deliver, but the bullet still penetrates him. Now, instead of getting rushed to the hospital, what does our bull moose do? He goes on to give a 90-minute speech. Here you can hear the first few words. I have just been shot, but it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. Pretty gangster Teddy Roosevelt. Now, why did John Schrank shoot Teddy Roosevelt? Because he cray cray. He actually had a dream where William McKinley stood from a coffin and pointed to a monk that was dressed as Teddy Roosevelt and said, this is my murderer, avenge my death. John Schrank is gonna be found not guilty by reason of insanity and spend the rest of his days until 1943 in a home for the criminally insane. Let's now travel back to January 30th, 1835, outside the U.S. Capitol building where President Andrew Jackson has just gone to a memorial service for South Carolina Congressman Warren Davis, who's passed on. As Andrew Jackson comes out of the Capitol, waiting for him is Richard Lawrence, a house painter who maybe has ingested too many fumes. As Andrew Jackson approaches him, he pulls out his first revolver, fires, and it doesn't go off. Andrew Jackson at this point takes his cane out and starts bopping him, and he takes another gun out. Richard Lawrence does and goes to shoot him again. That gun misfires as well. At this point, to the rescue, Davy Crockett, I kid you not, Congressman Crockett kind of tackles Richard Lawrence, probably saving him from Andrew Jackson. So why did Richard Lawrence try to assassinate Andrew Jackson? Simple, he thought he was King Richard III, and because Andrew Jackson was vetoing the Second National Bank, King Richard III wasn't going I'll get paid. Of course, he's arrested. He's put on trial for his life. The prosecution is going to be one Francis Scott Key. I kid you not. And he's not going to be successful. Richard Lawrence is found criminally insane. He's going to spend the rest of his days in a mental hospital until he passes along in 1861. Vladimir Altalani. We're in Tbilisi, Georgia, and I don't mean Georgia. I mean the ex-Soviet Republic. It's May 10th, 2005, and President George Bush is in Liberty Square to give a joint address to the peoples of Georgia with the Georgian president when Vladimir launches a grenade. I kid you not, a live grenade at the president. It lands about 60 feet from him right at the footsteps of Laura Bush. He had supposedly thrown it high to try to get it to explode and the strap metal would go over the bulletproof glass. Now, luckily for George Bush and Laura Bush especially, he wrapped it in a handkerchief too tight so the pin was never released. And it also hit a young girl on its way down, which kind of softened the blow so it wouldn't have exploded. It was a live grenade. Could you imagine what would have happened if that thing went off? Later, Vladimir is caught. He can confesses in his hospital bed, but at trial, he's not gonna say a word. In fact, he sewed his lips shut. I kid you not. So our fourth failed assassination attempt is gonna be on Harry Truman, who actually had two attempts on his life. The first one occurred in 1947 by an ultra-Zionist pro-Israeli group called the Stern Group, who mailed a letter bomb to the president. I guess it didn't go off. But in 1950, specifically on November 1st, 1950, two Puerto Rican nationals are gonna attack the president. Now the president wasn't at the White House, that was under reconstruction, he was at the Blair House, but on that morning, two nationals, Puerto Rican, nationals named Oscar Colazzo and Gracilio Tarasola 
They actually got to the front door where Grisilio killed an officer, Leslie Kofelt, and as that officer was dying, he managed to get a headshot off, killing the assailant. Now, Oscar's going to be wounded and going to be caught, and he's going to be sentenced to death. And it's actually Harry Truman who says, no, let's not kill the dude. He commutes his sentence to life. And Jimmy Carter, for good or bad, is going to actually parole or commute his sentence, and Oscar's going to go free. Where does he go? He goes to Cuba to get an award from Fidel Castro. Go figure. So our last attempt at assassination occurs in November 1963, JFK. No, not that one. The other one. Many people don't know that JFK, who was scheduled to be in Chicago on November 2nd, he was going to land at O'Hare and then go to Soldier's Field for the Army Air Force football game with Mayor Daley. Now, what we didn't know that we have found out, thanks to Secret Service agent Abraham Bolden, is that there were actually two assassination plots to kill the president that day. The Secret Service agent that I mentioned, Abraham Bolden, had gone undercovered and had connected with two Cuban nationals who were heavy into kind of the anti-Castro, anti-communist game. And one of them's name was Homer Echevarria, who was a well-known ex-Cuban uh, gun runner, basically. Now, apparently, on the day that it was supposed to go down, the FBI got a tip from a hotel owner that they had seen guns with telescopes on the bed and a map of the parade route. So the FBI kind of jumped the gun over the Secret Service, and the Cubans got away. On the same day, another dude, Thomas Valley, is pulled over en route to where JFK would have been driving by, and he has an M1 rifle, a handgun, and 3,000 rounds of ammo in him his car. Now, it doesn't seem like a big deal until you find out not only is he an ex-Marine, but he actually trained at the U-2 base in Japan at the same time as Lee Harvey Oswald. Now, with the Cubans on the run, JFK is going to cancel his trip to Chicago on November 2nd. The official reason is uh, the uh, assassination of South Vietnamese President Diem, but in actuality, it is because uh, there were real assassination attempts. Of course, three weeks later, they're going to get their man in Dallas. So how about that? Who said the YouTubes aren't for the learning? And we would love if you subscribed. You can do that right down below. And check us out online at www.hiphues.com. Go check out the video arsenal. We have over 450 videos that are just waiting for your brain. Now I'm going to say it because I say it at the end of every lecture I've ever given because I believe it with all my heart. Where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you folks next time. You press my buttons.